Good morning, John. It's Friday. Not just any Friday, my darling John. It is Friday 11-11. What's the big deal about that? I have no idea, but sometimes 11-11 is a time where you see people tweet, make a wish, and I have no idea why. And I could Google it right now, but frankly, I can't be bothered. But why can't I be bothered? Because it's also the first Friday of President-elect Trump's... President election re presidential election see I don't know yes that's right everybody we voted for Donald Trump to be president I didn't in particular I don't know how many of you did but people did some people voted for Donald Trump to be president moreover 46% of people didn't vote at all. For those of you that don't know who I am, my name is Hannah Hart. I have a YouTube channel called Harto. I am most well known for a show called My Drug Kitchen and most beloved for putting my feelings all over the internet. But I don't want to talk about me or how incredible I am. I want to talk about the trouble with wishing because it occurs to me that wishes are what got us here. It occurs to me that wishing is what made 46% of our population not vote. But let's talk about the good thing about wishes. What a wish is, is your heart's desires. It's, it's what you truly want. It's what you truly want to be true. It's what you truly want to see. It's what you truly want to do. So in that way, a wish is a great thing because it shows you things about yourself you might not otherwise know. What's the trouble with this wonderful thing? Well, it's a, it gets you into something called wishful thinking where you think you can do less and still get what you want. Now, I don't want to blame us for what just happened, but I am going to blame us. Yeah, I know. It's not our fault, but also maybe it is. So in terms of ourselves and our hopes and wishes and dreams and trying to turn those thoughts into actions and those actions into events of change, I think we probably took that action for ourselves. But what I worry we didn't do is have enough conversations with other people in our families. I'm just gonna say that. It's a beautiful and wonderful thing that we were motivated enough to vote as millennials this year, that we had such a strong turnout. And I think that the next step is talking to those members of our family and the people in our lives who perhaps hold alternative political beliefs to ours or live in a world of apathy. I am confident that there is someone in your family that voted for Donald Trump and or didn't vote at all. On a positive note, I do think it is an extraordinary thing to live in a country where we can still act in accordance with our beliefs. And while we can still do so, I think we should. While it is still safe for us to have these uncomfortable dinner conversations, I would like you to do so. If there is a member of your family that you know has opposing political beliefs to you, I know it is awkward, but show them your Twitter feed. Show them the instances of racism and violence that are already being incited in quote unquote Trump's America. If you have a friend that did not vote, show them this. And if they're like, well, that wasn't me. I didn't vote for Trump. Tell them, but you didn't vote at all. Therefore, they are guilty by association. I know you would like to pretend like your actions don't matter, but sorry, your actions and inactions matter a lot. So while we take this time to heal and mourn and grieve, which I implore you to do so because to rebuild your strength, you really need to rest for a second. I also would like to caution you to stay away from wishful thinking. It turns out that what we thought was enough isn't enough. So we can't cross our fingers for next time. We can't cross our fingers that in two years we're gonna elect a Congress more aligned with our beliefs. We have to start having those conversations now. And John, I'll see you on Tuesday or at youtube.com slash harto. Also, I hope you guys enjoyed this dramatic lighting. It is a dramatic time, which is so exciting. Mwah.